Hi everyone, Paul and Tessa Scale Modeler. Welcome to part 6 of the Trangus J37 Viggen 48 scale. Um, you saw this a few months back uh, where we painted up the camouflage scheme. We went over a cam you can see, we did the splinter cam, we decaled it, we clear coated it, washed it, and then matte coated it as well. Basically, pretty much the same as it was back then, although I put the heat shields in for the reverse thrusters, top. Uh, both sides and the bottom and I sprayed the front inside of the cockpit black my canopies are loose, they friction fit on absolutely fantastically so they can come off at any time at all and I sprayed that black went on a pitot tube uh, I seem to have mislaid the kit one, don't know where the hell it's gone but it's been quite some time building this so I've ordered a uh, brass one uh, off the internet, it should be here pretty soon, hopefully I've got a letter to do on the actual aircraft, I've got the landing gear to do which we'll go through in a second Ordnance to put on, I'll go through in a second. And I want to give it an old dot filter as well, just to tone it down a bit. It looks a little bit too new. A lot of the aircraft look weathered. They're either weathered or brand spanking new. I want a slightly weathered look, a few chips here and there, nothing too uh, overly uh, battered because it's not my style at all. But I definitely want an old dot filter just to give it that worn look. So that's the next step on this, but we're leaving this alone for now. So. That can go to one side. It's a beautiful looking aircraft. Every time I pick it up, it reminds me how absolutely stunning it is. Now, what we did, I'm going to grab it. The ordnance is a bit of a pain. There's a multitude of different uh, weapons that can be used. And I did the kit doesn't come with them, so getting them is a bit of a problem. So what I decided to do, I bought the big Cinta for the uh, Hobby Boss. Sorry, that's upside down. For the uh, Eduard F14 or any F14A. Now we get Sidewinders, uh, AIM 9s, AIM 7 Sparrows, and AIM 54 Phoenix. We're not using the Phoenix, uh, we're using the Sparrows and the Sidewinders. Uh, we've got two Sparrows, four Sidewinders. Now these are 9, um, 9M/L and 7M Sparrows. I believe it's a slightly different variant for this Division. I'm always pretty sure there's not a there's quite, it's either vague or random information on the internet about these aircraft, so, but this is as close as I can find. Um, so this is what we're going to use. Now, the resin, they're absolutely beautiful. So if I grab a couple, I should show you. So we've got the, the sparrows there. We've got the pylons, which I can't remember what came with the kit, or I've had spare ones somewhere, but we're using these pylons. I've seen a few people scratch building, but these are the pylons we're going to do. And these, I'm just going to grab two of them, are our sidewinders. Now, the resin, absolutely beautifully cast. Uh, we have the front stabilizers to put on. Cut off the plug at the back, bit of PE on the back. Uh, primer, the UMP Black Primer. And then sprayed a Mr. Hobby uh, H308, which is equivalent to FS36375, uh, which is the, the colour I found to be... Um, most widely accepted as the right colour. I did spray them green originally because I saw a lot of aircraft with green, but they turn out to be training uh, missiles, so I didn't really want that, so I've gone with this colour. Basically UK, uh, US spec colours. Um, so we went with this colour. Loads of decals to go on these, I'll get to those in a second. So this is the sidewinders, there's four of those. Then we've got the sparrows, these things are absolutely beautiful. Detail is fantastic. Yeah, we had to glow on the front stabilisers. Um, no real difficulty at all. A little bit of cleaner, cut the plug off, and again, primed the UP Black Prime and sprayed that H308. So, loads of decals to go on those as well, and the pylons, which have a few decals as well. Talking of decals, I'll show you what we actually have. So, they're for the, the Phoenix, so it's these two. So, there's not a huge amount, but there is quite a bit to go on. So, there's one lot. So, that's for the A9s, and then we've got the Sparrows there as well, so that's my job for later today once this video has been done. I thought I'd stop mid-progress and just show you where I'm at because obviously it's a build video, it's not a technique video so I'm, I'm not showing you how I do things as much. So that's that, they were fantastic, nice easy to clean up, usual precautions with resin um, but no real difficulty at all, they come with instructions for each separate uh, piece of ordnance, how to assemble them, so you can see there there's a the sidewinders, how they assemble and how they should look painted up and decal placement as well so absolutely fantastic and the sparrows the same again colour call out what they look like and assembly so that's come out really well as well so that's our ordnance uh, like I say over here um, all freshly painted as well got two more sidewinders 
ready to go. And we've got a central fuel tank as well. Now this did require quite a bit of work. Um, there's quite a nasty seam on top, which thankfully you cannot see at all. And you're describing, which again, thankfully has come out okay. And uh, again, primed in UMP black primer. Painted in that H308. Job done. There's a few decals to go on this, I believe, as well. So that sits in the centre. There's two sidewinds either side of it underneath. Two on the outer pylons, and the sparrows go on the two inner pylons. So it's a pretty well armed plane, as well as a 30mm cannon. It's quite a formidable fighter. It's a fast jet as well, so it's certainly uh, quite a formidable thing. Now, landing gear. This is more what I wanted to show you in progress. I did this last night. So we've got the front. Uh, landing covers, the rear, which are here in two parties, are all been cleaned up, uh, painted in UMP Black Primer again. We've got the resin wheels and that have come as aftermarket for the kit, well, well worth adding. So, resin wheel with all the nice, there's about four, five, seven pieces of P inside there and the rim as well. Obviously, you can't see it all now, I do have a picture, so I'll pop that up in a minute so you can see. And these are ready to be uh, sprayed in tyre black. And they're using a circle template, pick out the core of the center. So we've got four rear landing gear wheels and two front. These are just resin, no PE on these, they're all just attached to cocktail sticks for now. And then we've got the white metal rear landing gear. These are made of part aftermarket uh, Maestro white metal. So this main spot at the top. And the main L shape with this brace across is white metal. Everything else is plastic from the kit. CA glued in place. And what I've done, I've placed them inside the wheel bay to get the approximate locations for these. Time extra thinned and CA glued them on. Let them dry in position and again primed in UMP Black Primer. So that's the rear one. There's another one of those as well. And then we've got the front one as well. Centre part white metal. These two parts here are kept plastic. So they're all ready to paint up, and that's what I'm going to do later on as well. Um, this is what they look like unpainted, so you can see the different um, components, the resin and the photo etch of the wheels, and the white metal plastic of the actual landing gear legs themselves. So other than a few very small little bits and bobs, actuators, struts, etc., that is basically the assembly of the aircraft all done. So nice to get it out of the way. We've got a bit of painting to do, a little bit of weathering, and an order off fade on the aircraft itself. Now the trick of the, the tricky part of the order off fade is if we don't start filling all the panel lines with oil paints because we lose all, lose all our beautiful wash otherwise. So it's it's a slow, steady procedure using various tones just to give it that real worn look. I personally do like the look like this, but it does look a little bit too a little bit too new. It looks it needs to look a little bit more worn in my opinion. So that's what we're going to do. So my job today, I'm going to decal up the, um, the armaments and the fuel tank and the pylons. They can then dry and then be clear coated ready for a wash. And then matte coated, a little bit of weather on those as well. And that's the ordnance done. And then I've got to paint up all the landing gear uh, and all the landing gear bay doors as well. So I've still got a bit of work to do. Today is Sunday, it's Father's Day and it's uh, 20 to 4 in the afternoon. So I'm going to crack on with this, hopefully we'll be back, um, I'm hoping tomorrow to be honest, I can get a lot of work done today and tonight, um, and we'll come back and get the rest of the film done, and I'll come back, show all built and assembled before the dot filter, because I will probably, oh, will I do that last? No I probably won't, we'll come back for the dot filter and then we'll come back for it assembled. I'm waiting on the pitot tube, which should be here hopefully Monday, Tuesday. Uh, so until that arrives I can't show it finished anyway so we're literally in the hands of the post gods um, so there we go so I'll be back in a couple of days we'll see the progress I'm at and uh, hopefully we'll see some real progression and near an end of this project okay so I'll see you soon I'll be back very soon guys okay so it's a couple of days later um, we've done a few things off camera we've got all the ordnance ready landing gear landing gear uh, door bay uh, bay doors fuel tank pile etc all done Quite a bit of work involved in doing all those. It's taken me several days to do them. Um, it's the 22nd today. I can't remember what date the last update was, but this is where we're at now. Um, today, I've also uh, done a few more paint effects on the Vigan as well. We've added um, a little bit more post shading just on the panels. 
quite hard to pick, nothing too drastic, just to highlight them a little bit, uh, nothing too unrealistic. We also added a bit more mottling to the paintwork, and I did this using Tamiya Smoke, just to give a nice worn effect. I'm bring it up, hoping you can see the kind of effect I'm talking about. So the naked eye it shows up really well, um, sadly, on the video camera it doesn't be done underneath as well. Uh, the landing bays are weathered, they're ready to go, they've been given a wash. We've got the front ready uh, for the Pito tube, which I bought a master one uh, off eBay. You get the Pito tube, uh, the wing mounted Pito tube, the nose one, and the angle of attack uh, probe as well. So that's good. Uh, the Pito tube is here, it's absolutely minute, so that's ready to be. Installed in the nose, once we get everything on, we'll put that in, glue it in place, and then spray it with the UMP black primer as we did the nose. So, 0.5 mil uh, hole on the front. We shaped the tip a bit more to match our um, tube, and that's ready to go. So, that's most of the aircraft done. Now, I was going to do an oil dot filter, which loads of dots of filter, but the problem is, we're doing it afterwards, you run the risk of filling the panel lines with it. Quite happy with the paintwork, so I don't want to really hide that. Just some bits and bobs need dulling down. So I'm going to use some pastels. Uh, I've got a big set of pastels, all different colours and tones. Uh, literally scrape them off with a knife, run it around with a brush, dust it off, push it in, and I can give some nice fade effects. Just want to fade some of the paintwork a bit more, fade the decals a little bit more, put some smoke over the decals as well to take the, the brightness off them. Um, and that's what I'm going to try. Because this is a showpiece for Telford, uh, because we sell the kit, uh, we sell the mass set and it's our wash as well in all the panel lines etc. I don't really want to hide it all by weathering the hell out of the aircraft so I don't want to fade the paint so you can't see it very well. I don't want to chip the crap out of it again for the same reason. So if it was my aircraft I'd fade it with oil, I'd then chip it as well. Get that real worn look. This is going to be in between so we'll have a faded look but it won't be absolutely battered. So. That's what I think we're going to do. So I will show you how I use the the pastels in a little bit. Um, off camera we've worked on the landing gear, so we've got the rears and the front. So it's white metal mixed with plastic, resin wheels. Uh, we put a wash on it, paint it up on all wash, uh, and then we've got the resin wheels on. Spray those up. Oh, got a little fly. Uh, spray those up. Give them a little bit of a mixed concrete earth UMP wash in the treads. And that's that done. So the front, two rears are identical, so we'll just use one. Uh, and as you can see, multi component on the back. Hopefully, it's all going to line up when it's all stuck in place. We shall see. Uh, got landing bay doors, they've all been painted up, given a wash too. So there's several components to those, so they're all ready to rock and roll as well. Nice and simple, not too difficult. We've got the weapons pylons. Again, nothing too hard. Painted up. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see. I'll do. Painted up, given a wash. They need to stick it in place, and then the weapons on top. So we've got four sidewinders. Uh, these are the other our brass and set, so they're resin weapons. Uh, dozens of decals per weapon. They certainly took a while. I need to just get the clear nose cone free, and I'll use a cotton bud with a bit of thinner on it just to scrape it off. That's how I always do it. Give it an oil wash and some smoke. Come on, focus. Oh, sad not to focus. There we go. Uh, give it an oil, no, a smoke. Spray over this afternoon as well to tighten the rest of the aircraft. So there's four of those bad boys. We've got four of the sparrows as well. These are absolutely beautiful from Edward. Very, very nice. Again, several decals, but they turned out really nice. And they're going to look the part on the aircraft. So we've got those as well. And we've also got the center drop tank again, which got an oil wash. Some smoke effects all around. It's come out quite nice, definitely. Uh, would I recommend using a darker colour? Uh, UMP, this is UMP on this one, oil on the weapons, just because of the smaller size of them. Um, 
it's probably a bit too dark for this kind of thing. On the green and that, it's about right colour. On this, I'd probably use a slightly lighter colour, but uh, it's for emphasis. Emphasis. Uh, I wanted to show because obviously it's a showpiece, so it is over exaggerated a little bit. Um, that's it, really. So I'm going to crack on. I'm going to um, get the pigments ready. I'll show you how I do it. I'll come back in a minute. We'll show that. Uh, and we'll just show how we're going to fade the paint a little bit. Uh, I've got the canopy take off, it's still loose on the aircraft. I'm just going to give it a clean, pop it back on, and decide whether I want the canopy open or closed. Uh, probably going to go for closed. I don't know, I'm not sure yet. Uh, but we'll pick one or the other, and then we can get all the landing gear on, the ordnance on, and we're done. Uh, after all this time, after over a year, we'll finally get it done. So there we go. So we'll pop back in a few minutes and I'll show you how we're going to fade the paint using the pastels. Okay, so pigments, I've got a big giant box, 64 pastels in here. Uh, sadly, they've all moved around in the order, so pretty much useless like that now. Um, but you still see the colours required. I think I got these on eBay for like, I don't know, £12 posted from the Far East. Absolute bargain. Uh, and there's every colour under the sun. If I move it over, you can see it a little bit. There's a multitude of blues, greens, reds, yellows, loads of different colours. Uh, for now, we're going to use the greens, and I'll just show you what we're going to do. So, we need a paintbrush. Oh, what have we got? Which one are you? Find an inadequate. You will do nicely. So, fairly broad paintbrush. Cup, I've got a plastic measuring cup, and the pastel as well. Now, there's two ways of doing it. You can scribe it off. Um, get the powder out, or you can grab the pastel itself, either lightly rub it on and then rub it in, but I don't like to do that. Most of the time, I'll just run my finger on it, get your finger loaded up like so, and you can pop it on where you want. And rub it in with your finger. Obviously you can pick and choose where you're putting it and how much you're putting it and how much you rub in. Obviously we've got a couple of shades of green. So we can get away with mixing over. But for these, but there's the effect I'm after. I can get it off the black. Just get a bit over there as well. We'll get a whole wing done in this one colour. And we'll have a look. Obviously, you're going to contaminate other colours. But obviously, the more you rub, the more it comes off. Oh, matron. Um, it's a case of you figuring out just what you want to do. Obviously, try and not fill your panel lines that you took all that time and effort um, building up with your wash and obviously when you pick the aircraft up make sure your things are clean again what we've got, I don't know if it'll show so we've got different tones underneath, now you can see where we've got the matter finish over the shine yeah. and the matter is where the pigment is off the pastel so what I've got there, several nice tones Along the back here as well, you can see all the different tones in there. And obviously you can blend in as much as you want. Or come back and have more, or you can take it almost off completely. But you can see the different tones and the, the dullness we've got on there. So it gives a bit of different light. And I really like the look of it. Now what you can do then is you can come with a lighter tone, or darker. Let me find a lighter one. I'm not looking too drastically lighter. So I'm going to go. Let's go for that one. I'm just going to grab a little bit of that colour. Right, it's like a yellowy. We'll pop it on the lighter green this time. And again, same result. Uh, it's, it's hard to show on camera, but we get the different tonal colours from it. 
Um, so it's like a secondary weather, and that's the look, kind of look you'll get from doing the oil fading. It's a faded look, and it's exactly what it wants. I'm just going to run it around a few areas. Now, you can also um, scrape it off with a knife into a pot, use the brush, but it's not as accurate a way. I like doing it this way. It's kind of satisfying. I suppose it's like finger paint when you're a little kid. Um, or as an adult, if it's that's what floats your boat. Um, it certainly adds a good effect. That's just the kind of get you get the haziness you get off an oiled off filter, and that's exactly what I want. So let's get a little bit more to the front there, a little bit to that bit there. This is what I like about the thing you can literally get it exactly where you want it. Use one finger to put it on. Another thing to rub it off, and again, you can intermix on the greens, get some of the lighter stuff on the darker, vice versa. Like so, now if we do the black, we'll do a dark, dark grey. So there's a nice dark grey. So there we go. Pop it on. Obviously, you can use pencil chalk for this. Numerous ways of doing it. There we go, and then we need a tan colour. So the tan colour will go with that slightly lighter colour. I think it's more of a yellow though, but we'll try it. See what she does. Perfect. What I'll do is I'll do this entire wing. Then I'll go away, do the whole thing. And we'll come back. Well, like I say, I find it quite satisfying to do. The result's great. Done a few aircraft now. And I mean, you can experiment. You can put, that's the tan colour. Pop that on the green. Gives a real nice faded effect. That's all. All the tan colour's done. So we'll do that. Be sure any brush you use, you can use a brush to dust off any accumulated pigment, but that's just the effect I want. It's very, very subtle. It's just the way I like it now. I'm looking for a red to fade out that red number. I think we'll go. With that one. So we've got that red on it, not far off a match. Just gonna rub it on and around now this colour you want to avoid the rest of the paintwork. Just that will end up everywhere. Well I've got my finger, I'm gonna do the other side as well. What do you mean? I mean, want a darker colour. And this set is sadly a bit lacking in the reds. I do have another set somewhere. Do that. Nope. Don't know the gun, but never mind. Um, 
try brown. Let's try real nice dark brown. Let's go for that one there. We've got that colour brown. Let's go try that and see what it does. That's about right for me. That's a good colour. Give us that one. So it's a bit laborious. Well, obviously it's really toned down that red and that wing now. It's probably hard for you guys to see, but it has. Um, it's a bit of a big difference. Just do this one, a bit more on my finger. Like I say, I'll come back, get it all done, and I'll probably just show it all assembled. And we should be finished. Um, you can see the effect of all the fading. We'll get the um, pito tube on then. Have a look and see what that looks like. I'm going to try a bit of an orange. Orange works well, that's really faded that now. Fantastic. Yeah, orange is a good colour too. That's really faded out that red. And if you want to at the end you can seal it. Um will I seal it? I do not know. Most probably not, to be honest. Probably won't seal it. These as is, I don't really lose any effect. But there we go. So there's one wing. It's hard to see on camera. It really is, but it is there. It's just enough for me to appreciate what it's done. It's toned down those decals really nicely. So I'm going to continue. Uh, it's going to take a few hours to do. Uh, once we're done, we'll come back and have a look at the whole thing assembled. So see you in a bit. Bye bye. Okay, well, there she is. She's all done. Um, spent a couple of hours last night using the uh, pastels to fade the paint. It's very, very subtle. Uh, it shows a lot to the naked eye. Not so much on photographs, which I did last night and put them on ISM. They're going on the forum today. Uh, whether it was shown the video, they normally do. We'll see more when we go from a bench in a second. Um, but yeah, we spent a couple of hours doing all the pastel work all over the upper surfaces. Lower surfaces didn't really need it. It was already faded enough, and I was happy with that. Um, we faded down the decals, which is what we wanted. All the paintworks nicely faded and given that real worn look I was looking for. All the ordnances on, the sparrows and the sidewinders, they look great. Excellent addition from Eduard. One of their brassing sets actually for the F-14. So other than the Phoenix, which we didn't use, but we'll use those at a later date. Um, it was worth, uh, I think it was £12 it cost me. Uh, posted for it um, so there are all attached the centre fuel tanks on all the landing gears on uh, you can see in the mirror underneath the reflection the doors are on etc pressing wheels etc all on and a few little details got the pitot tube on the front of the nose this was a master one I showed you uh, just before uh, glued in place the nose was shaped uh, sanded and touched up with UMP primer again I have bent that pito tube several times, it does need straightening a little bit now. Uh, caught on the back of this photo book about three times, I should do. Um, and that's it, so overall, very happy how it looks. If it was my model, I'd probably weather it a bit more. Uh, I would have definitely put an oil wash on it, uh, oil fading filter on it. Uh, oh, sorry, getting confused. An oil dot filter on it. Uh, and I probably would have put some chipping on it too. But like I say, because it's a showpiece, uh, I don't want to hide all the hard work of that camouflage and I'm quite happy with it there's numerous pictures out there of these things in dire need of uh, <laughs> some maintenance and to absolutely brand spanking you so it, uh, it's up to the modeler what they want to do and I chose to do it like this so overall the build fantastic it's a great kit it's not an easy kit it's not a beginner's kit definitely more of a intermediate advanced kit because there's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, rescribing to do, some tricky fits here and there that you need to work around. The camouflage I definitely wouldn't recommend for a beginner. Um, that's a lot of work to do. Good few hours in that. Um, 
But other than that, the kit's faultless. We do all the aftermarket for it, and it's a worthy addition. The cockpit, the wheels, the landing gear, uh, struts, etc. Um, is a worthy addition. And like I say, if you do need ordnance, definitely look at the Edward Brassing, because it was beautiful to put together. Quite a lot of work in that ordnance. Um, not just painting, but decals as well. A lot of decals. There's upwards of 15 decals per missile, so it took quite a bit of time to do. But well worth it in the end. I'm glad I did an armed version because uh, most of these you see don't carry any ordnance uh, models. I mean, so I'm glad I took the time to put it on, and I think it looks really, really well. So quite happy with it, and it will sit in my display case till Telford, and it'll be on our table at the UMP Ultimate Model and Product Stand at Telford this year. Um, so if you're there, come on over, have a look at it in real life, and you'll see uh, the very nice faded paintwork, which I hope is going to show when we move over to my bench to have a quick look around it and a quick look underneath as well. So there you go. So there's a quick overview. We'll go to my bench and we'll have a proper close-up look at it. So we're back over on the bench, uh, you can see a bit more, uh, not as bright, intense light, and hopefully see some of the paint effects we've got. Like I said, it's been a great kit to build. It's taken quite some time to do, um, mainly because I was terrified of that masking. Uh, I think I put, put it off for six months before I finally getting around to it, but wasn't that bad to do. The, the mask set we sell um, from Maestro uh, was absolutely brilliant. It saved a lot of time. A few people have done it after me and said, although it is quite daunting, it's actually it's pretty easy to do. It's just time consuming, obviously, because you've got four different colours, five of your counts underneath. And it, it's just time consuming. It's not hard to do it all. So don't be uh, intimidated by it. If you want to do this scheme, just crack on and do it. And it's absolutely brilliant. Love the uh, the camouflage. It's a stunning. It's got to be one of the best camouflages on any aircraft, full stop. Uh, it's a stunning looking aircraft as well. That delta wing with the canards at the front. Side profile. It's just a very, very formidable fighter. And obviously, um, as a kit, it's a great kit. Like I say, it's not a kit for a beginner, it's definitely for the more intermediate advanced model because there's a bit of uh, a lot of describing to do on the side. Uh, there's a few um, places where it needs a bit of wrangling to get it to fit and whatnot. There's no fit issues as such, but it's not a Tamiya kit, it doesn't just fall together. Um, but overall, very, very happy. We've gone, um, you see what I was doing with the pastels, so we did paint effects to it. We faded, highlighted like normal, uh, and then came in yesterday with some Tamiya smoke. We've highlighted some of the panel lines a little bit more because some of the pictures we were showing did show some of the panel lines to be a little bit more um, uh, pronounced than others. So I've done a few random ones. We added some darker tones to the paint again, and then I've gone around with the pastels as you saw yesterday, and we've really rubbed that in to give a real faded effect. Whoever it shows on the camera, I don't know, it does to me, and it's just the effect of what we've done down those numbers as well, those bright fluorescent red-orange numbers uh, and it's come out really well, very very happy with it uh, although it's taken me a while to do, it's nice to get it done and it's going to make a nice little showpiece of Telford obviously because we sell the kit as well uh, and obviously the camouflage is quite a talking point so we spin around underneath, uh, you can see all the ordnance we've got like I said it didn't really fade underneath, I'd already done quite a bit to it underneath um, and I think it looks alright I think I'm not really a jet person, if I'm honest. I've only built God, not even half a dozen jets. I don't think it's that many. I think it's about four over the twenty odd years I've modelled. Um uh, thirty odd years actually, Jesus. Uh I've modelled on and off. So, you know, I'm quite new to these, so any suggestions, give me yeah, let me know in the comments. I'm more than happy to listen to them. I don't know if I've asked for any uh critique, but if it's something I'm not sure on, uh I certainly ask, but yeah, landing gear done, uh, landing bays, all the gears in, the missiles are on, the Edward missiles, absolutely fantastic, a very worthy addition, I'm glad I armed it up, because it does look a lot better, no missiles with the kits, no armaments at all, we do get the drop tanks, um, you can get rocket pods for it, uh, huge, what are they called, I forget the name of the missiles now, we sell all UMP, but it's came out well. The only thing I regret doing on this, I originally primed it in Alkalad uh, Black Primer a long time ago before we started the only U selling UMP and before I even used uh, Badger. In the landing base, you see the rough texture? That's where it's swirled inside and I've got the real grittiness in there. Now, I didn't really spot it until I sprayed the silver and I was like, crap. So 
hopefully it's incorporated that into the weathering. Um, it looks all right. It's held a wash well, and it's certainly given a bit of depth in there. Um, but like I say, this is a showpiece. This isn't for me. Um, I would build one quite happily, but this was built purely and simply for this video and for the show table itself. And so I would have added a bit of scratch to the uh, wheels, etc. But like I say, I want to show how it comes out of the box. We've got canopy up. Uh, I do have a ladder for it as well. I've got a photo etched ladder, um, which I learned me less than from last time. I spent ages last time um, building an Eduard scratch ladder for an F16 Red on show at Telford. And uh, <laughs> after building it, and it was in the display case, I got it out one day, a couple of weeks before Telford, dropped it on the floor, ran over it with my chair, and crushed it. So I'll build this ladder like the night before I go to Telford, and it goes straight in the box and go straight there. I'm not building it before because they're too fiddly to muck around with and rebuild twice. So, like I say, my chair absolutely mullered it and uh, yeah, absolutely destroyed it. So I wasn't too impressed at all. So like I say, um, this has been ongoing for over a year now, oh God, as is the crash, we'll get to that next as well. What I plan to do next um, for a build is we're going to revisit the techniques guide. We did uh, like a beginner's guide to build an aircraft. We used Airfix 109, we built it out of the box. We did basic weathering, basic skills, etc. Showing how things are done. My skills will evolve from then. Those videos are three years old and things have changed on how I do them. So we did the beginners one. I'm going to do more intermediate advanced. So we're going to pick um, more than liking. I think it's going to be a 109 again. I think it needs to be a 109 for the continuity. We're going to pick an Edward Profi pack. So straight away we get good decals. We get masks. We get photo etch. And a good kit to start with as well. So we can show you the photo etch in the cockpit. We can show the mask set rather than me masking like I did last time. Good quality decals. We can show how they lay down. I'll also buy some resin for it. Not sure what yet. Um, at least wheels. I think there might be exhaust. Things like that. So we can show a little bit on working with resin. I'm not going to resin cockpit because I want to show the photo etch. I think that's more important than the resin cockpit. The basics of resin can be carried over. So you can figure that out for yourselves. Uh, I'll probably add some metal gun barrels. Um, Etc. I'm going to see what there is for it. So I'm hoping to start that pretty soon. Um... We should say I need to get a crash video out and get that bore on on that again, and then we'll get those slightly more advanced technique guide up. Again, it's not me showing you how to do it, it's just me showing how I do it. I'm not an expert at this by far. There's a lot more talented models out there worthy of showing you stuff than me. But I'll do the videos. I don't we don't charge for the videos, so it's free for you to see, and I can just show you how I go about doing it. And that's it. So there you go, the Trangus Vigan, long waited. Uh Highly anticipated, highly feared at one point, and uh, it's nice to get it done. She looks great. She's going to sit in my display case now. I've got a nice bit of space with my F-16s. She's going to sit in there, and like I say, if you want to see it, come over to the stand at Telford in November. It'll be proudly placed on the table uh, for you to have a look at. And you never know, we might have the 109 built by then as well. And the Kraz, fingers crossed, we shall see. Uh, but pop over and have a look. Bye. Uh, for sure. So, okay, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys around, and I'll see you soon.